At the beginning of 2022, the Scottish fencing community was looking forward to two Commonwealth Championships. Fencers under the age of 17 and those under 20, India was preparing to host the Cadet and Junior Championships in 2021. For athletes in the Open category and the over 40s, London, England would be the venue for the Senior and Veteran Championships in 2022. And then, the COVID-19 pandemic. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades, and this country is not alone. All over the world, we're seeing the devastating impact of this invisible killer. And so tonight, I want to update you on the latest steps we're taking to fight the disease and what you can do to help. Lockdown. Face masks. Hand sanitizer. Social distancing. Lateral flow tests. And finally, vaccines. Millions of lives lost. At the height of the pandemic, amid a spiralling death toll and struggling national infrastructure, the Fencing Association of India announced that it would have to cancel the 2021 Cadet and Junior Fencing Championships. Gradually, the world emerged from the darkest days of the pandemic, and fencing returned, albeit with new protocols and restrictions. some of which seemed particularly tough in the depths of a Scottish winter. And in the second half of 2021, so two competitions, in all the usual glamorous locations. But what about the cadets and juniors? and their cancelled championships. Time to meet Alex to find out how Commonwealth Championships happen and why London in 2022 would be unique. It had been suggested by the Commonwealth Federation that it was about time that England hosted the Senior and Veteran Championships. Um, the last time England had hosted it, I think, was back in 1990. Um, so it's been... a very long time since England had hosted sort of the, they call it the Open and the Veteran Championships of the Seniors. Um, and so England fencing agreed to that and then not quite desperately but somewhat frantically went around finding someone that would be brave or stupid enough uh, to agree to run a, an international championship with essentially zero investment. I said, yeah, I'll give it a go. Um, what's the worst that can happen? Um, take some of the best bits from Largs, the best bits from Newcastle, add a bit of stuff. And so we added in to our bid a whole complement of wheelchair events, um, as they were called at the time, now they're called para fencing. And so we added a men's event and a women's event, individual and team, to be co-located with the senior championship on the finals piece with video refereeing and live streaming in the thick of it with the rest of them so not as sort of a tack on but a proper integrated part so then we had that added then um covid happened so all of this stuff has been years ago because it was before the pandemic was even because of the covid19 pandemic obviously the 20 21 cadet and junior championships that were slated to be in india were cancelled q a very frantic phone call <laughs> um at about 1 a.m uk time because the call came from australia of so we know this is crazy but would you consider making your championships just a little bit bigger and adding on an extra 24 events <laughs> and adding in the cadets and juniors. And originally we said, absolutely not. This is madness. Uh, it felt wrong to say no to it just because it was going to be difficult. So the context for this is Cairo recently was the biggest world championships they've ever had. They had 800 individuals and about 150 teams. 
we planned to have about a thousand individuals and 150 teams as well. And we've now got over 1200 fences. We have over 180 teams competing. And so we're at the stage now where we are running by a long way, the largest international competition anyone's ever been stupid enough to attempt. So now we have a championships for everyone. How will the Scottish teams be selected? Time to meet Paul to find out some of the challenges and opportunities there. Well, I mean, there's been a real tough um, uh, process. Um, We didn't have a full season. We haven't had competition for, you know, for two years prior to because of the the pandemic. Um, And so, you know, a lot of difficult decisions that we're having to get made about one, I think, from the organisers' perspectives about when the competitions were actually going to happen, where they actually going to take place. Um, But also then when it comes down to how you actually organise to get um, 90 fencers um, to a competition, um, how are you going to select them when you don't really have um, the, the sort of normal selection criteria you might uh, be looking at. And I think one of the other things we were quite keen on this time was to make sure that folk were involved in the process all the way through. So very early on, as soon as the, the, the dates were announced, we ran um, sessions to sort of explain what the, what the, the competition was about, started to get drawing the information from folk about the type of thing they wanted to know uh, and beginning to look at what we could do by way of um, a selection criteria to get to uh, that was fair for folk that they could understand and that we could then get to that point of having a a squad. So I'm really looking forward to sort of seeing how that progresses, how that really develops that team spirit so that when we get down to um, London in August, we've got that real sort of Scottish camaraderie, which you know, we all know is something that the Scottish team has always been well known for. In March 2022, Scottish Fencing were able to announce the appointment of former British champion and British team member Keith Cook as performance consultant to lead preparations for the Commonwealth Championships. And in May, the teams, coaches and support staff were selected. But where do these fencers come from? where you go to be inspired. To learn the game. To play some games. To get those fast feet. to test yourself. (laughs) Plus some chat. (laughs) More footwork. Individual lessons with your coach. More lessons. More footwork. Physical preparation, more games, more footwork, more lessons. More chat, more sparring. Until it's time to test yourself in battle. starting with the Foundation for Scottish Fencing's Excellent Youth Development Series. Liam Paul's Equally Excellent Junior Series. The British Youth Championships. Cadet and Junior British Ranking Competitions. Cadet and Junior National Championships. Under-23 National Championships. Senior Nationals. European Circuit. Junior World Cups, Senior World Cups, European Championships and World Championships, the Olympic Games. But first, you have to start. 
With offences prepared in their clubs and tested in competition, it was time to bring the teams together for a series of training weekends, starting with a return to Bathgate. We're ready for an action pack next day, two days. these training weekends gave us a chance to get to know the fencers and coaches a little better. I started fencing in a small town called Taupo, in the middle of the North Island in New Zealand. Uh, I'd finished school and was working for a year and saw an advert for a local club which had just started up uh, on the back of my back of the local newspaper and yeah, along I went and here I am. And Taupo appeared in 1970 and there was come and try courses run after that. And I went and tried, and it was a brand new school, and it was quite there. So I've been fencing ever since. And I just came home one day, and my mum was like, our neighbour is running a fencing club at school, so do you want to join? I said no, and she took me along with me. I really enjoy watching the future of Earth, because um, I think that she. Well, She's really good, but also I think that her style is like similar to mine in some respects. Yeah, I'd probably say Olga Carlan currently. Um, I think she's impressive, like especially with what's happening going on in Ukraine. She's, you know, it's a lot for her to deal with mentally, and she's still performing and she's still able to compete and train despite all the sort of circumstances. And you know, I think she's someone to really look up to, actually. Ooh, Aaron Zawagi. I mean, the man just won a third gold medal. Um, I think he's an absolute fantastic sportsman. I think he conducts himself well. Um, so yeah, out of push him, both for his success and his mannerisms, I think you can win. But if you're going to be acting spoiled, self-entitled, then you're not really winning. I think from an admiration point of view, I admire Bebe Vaio, who is the Italian foilist who is a wheelchair fencer who lost both her arms and legs to meningitis when she was 12, I think, and has now won two successive golds. I think um, the ability to come back from something like that and achieve massive sporting success is pretty impressive. And I think just the whole physio side of me admires that, that tenaciousness. Kate, okay, Nathan, she's at my club and I've been looking on her for so long, but I totally admire her.
definitely the one-on-one -on -one aspect in that, how you can get in people's heads, you can do things to make them upset. That sounded sadistic. But it's, <laughs> it's more just, it's, it is, there's a way of expressing yourself. Setting traps and springing them up successfully is the best bit when you set a distance trap and it works. Uh, probably the social aspect. I think my club mates are really good fun to be around. Um, all the people seeing that the competition is really lovely. It's such a challenging sport, mentally and physically. It's not just, I mean, no hate to runners, but you, you don't just run. Like, there is no, there's no mental aspect to it in a way. That's a challenge that um, it's not a given that you're going to win. Uh, you have to work hard for it. Um, it's easy to win when you're fencing well. The uh, hard part is about being able to grind out the wins when you're not fencing that well. I can name on my hand the amount of times I felt actually uh, top form and all the others that I've been able to grind it out. And I think it was that grit and determination that I love about it. Oh, I like it all, to be honest. Apart from losing, probably losing. Um, the kit. <laughs> I hate putting on three layers of kit and getting sweaty. It's uncomfortable. Um, it's yeah, it gets too hot in summer. I think if there's one, something I'd improve would be a thinner kit or just less of it. <laughs> I'm sick of it. <laughs> least the injuries um i mean like just uh, just in the last fight i've just come off of uh, you know you, you clash guards with someone the thumbs get hurt a little bit and that's something like i'm working full time at the moment you get injured and you still have to get up the next day and go to work <laughs> traveling <laughs> bit of a nightmare cost a lot of money but gotta do it and losing to people that you know you can beat that's even worse yeah that's the top of the list of things is losing to people you know you can beat politics It'll be enjoyable to fence with my teammates and club mates as well, and we've got each other so well, so it'll be a good experience. I'm looking forward to fencing in the team event, the bonds, seeing the other team's fence, not my own, the other team's fence, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the, the teams, probably. I, I quite enjoy fencing with the Scotland team. We generally have a pretty good team spirit, and, and we're generally quite good at sort of outperforming ourselves. I'm quite excited to see everybody fencing. So normally it's the seniors are separate from, you know, the juniors and the cadets and quite a lot of the fencers I've seen in my own club that I've coached and help. I'm seeing them develop, you know, from little eight year olds to like part of the strong cadet team. And I'm quite excited to watch them compete as well. I think being part of a big team in that uh, space is just great. I love that. I love that and I like representing my country, I feel proud um, and I'm there to support, I'll be there for the whole week so I'll be supporting as well, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Well, if you coach more than you train, you're a coach and I'm doing this for one reason alone. My son, uh, Jamie Cook, um, said to me, because uh, I'm basically retired, he says there's never been a father-son uh, in the same team. Um, and he thought it'd be quite a special moment for us both being able to be in the same team. So I had to dust off my kit, I had to put it on, but not just put it on, I had to make the results to be able to make there. And when it comes to what I'm looking forward to, just being in the team with the Scottish team one more time. I think that's very strong actually, Sean. We've got four, in the men's epic, we've got four all trainers together in the same club. And Campbell, they um, uh, know him from when he was based in Scotland. And for the women's team, we've got Georgina and Kat Smith, who are outstanding senior fences that can draw on the younger fences there. I think they're two very strong teams, actually. I think that we should um, have a good performance out of both of them. I think we've got some really good teams actually this year. I think it'll be really good. We've got a nice mixed bunch of athletes, mentalities, strengths and weaknesses. And I think they'll tie in really nicely and work together. It's just getting them all to know each other. We're trying to get them right across the age groups. Age groups and the men and the women all doing stuff together as well. It's been really fun so far. Everyone's been, been really positive and everyone seems to be mingling together quite well, which is great. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. For reasons of cost and availability, and because there's only so much bathgate most people can handle, training weekends two and three saw the Sabrars head to Sal Ossian in Perth, where the foilists and Epiest gathered at Sal Holyrood in Edinburgh.
to continue their preparations. It was uh, good to get an opportunity to play this with, with the girls that we have sent together to um, I think quite often because we train in separate clubs, we don't actually get the chance to, to fence together before we're ready to go and fence as a team. So it's nice to even just have a bit of a laugh, train together, find out what people are enjoying, what people are not so happy about, what people like doing and how how hopefully we can make it better for one right now. I got a lot of fun watching them learn and try new things. Uh, it's, good, it's good to get the whole squad together and then kind of get together with our team before they actually come out. I think the fencers have started to gel as a team, Sean, and they've been encouraging each other and the, the tactical awareness of team matches has increased over these two weekends and for me to see the teams grow. Oh, goodness, it was tiring. <laughs> um, it was really good. We've done a lot of games and scenarios that I hadn't done before, um, a lot of agility work, and just a lot in general that I wouldn't have done normally at training, but it's given me ideas to maybe put into my sort of weekly training. And a lot of teamwork, which has been really good. It's been really nice to sort of get to know everyone as well on the team. Uh, I've come to tidy up and make sure Andy does his job <laughs> and um, pick up some weird guy from the to make sure he goes back home. Yeah. You've got your work cut out. You've actually got the hardest job here, I would say, yeah. Before we head to London, time to meet Ben for an outsider's view of the Commonwealth Championships and the Scottish team. This will be my fourth uh, as a senior, uh, so five in total if you count my junior ones. So that's a lot of Commonwealth fencing. Um, I think it's taken me all over the world, um, you know, Australia twice, Malaysia. Um, obviously Scotland and now going to be England. I think it's played a big big part, part for me. I've, some of the things I've always wanted to achieve when I look back at my career were national championships, Commonwealth, Europeans, Worlds and, and, and Olympic Games. And it's a very, very strong uh, event. And it's a really friendly environment as well. I like the fact that GB splits up and that we get to uh, fence our counterparts actually that we're usually on squads with at, at World Cup and international level. So yeah, it means a lot to me. It's got a, it's got a place in my heart and that's why I've continued to uh, strive for them. And it, yeah, and actually, so much so, it was my last event. I'm hoping I can only defend my title, but if not, nonetheless, friends and family will be able to be there. Um, and it'll be a nice way to kind of bring my career to an end. Well, um, always uh, always a tough opponent. Uh, we drew Scotland in the final um, of the Commonwealth in, in 2014 in Largs, and that was an amazing experience. You know, they had the, the individual champion that day. Keith had also put me out in the in the earlier rounds of the individual, and so it was, it was a real head-to-head. -head. And then I was on the last leg and nearly bottled it, but I just about brought it home. Um, so really, really fierce competitors. And what I've always liked about the Scottish team is the sense of um, camaraderie everybody has. Um, everyone's very close. Um, there's always a lot of fun in the Scottish camp. Um, and there's always a lot of banter. You can always have a real good laugh at Scots. Um, yeah, strong team, great place, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to hopefully battling it out with them in London. So now we know what the enemy looks like, let's go to the familiar sights of London in August 2022 and our competition home, the University of East London's sports dock for the process of setting up a championships venue. Possibly the most challenging 36 hours of my life. The French computer program that we run everything on doing the appropriately French thing and going on strike in August. The most serious challenge was undoubtedly when half of our pieces were on a truck that crashed. 
And so we didn't have our piece the day before the competition and we're in crack of dawn day one with all the fences desperately laying out the finals piece, the four main piece for video referee and half the piece in the second arena. Um, that was rough. But in the end, everything was ready. And the place looked rather magnificent. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to London. Oh, and one more thing to mention. In August 2022, the southeast of England suffered an incredible heat wave. In a venue without air conditioning and sports halls, it was very hot. Remember those grumbles about how hot fencing kit can be? Yeah, that. The opening day and senior individual action first. The fencers set up camp and ease into the first day of competition. All two looked chaotic. The pools progressed smoothly. In the men's epi, three of the team reached the quarterfinals, where Callum Johnson and Jamie Firth bowed out. Johnny Woolard progressed to step onto the podium for Scotland's first medal of the championships with a bronze. I wanted to do well enough to make it on the team, and that's the only plan I had all day, was to try and do well enough to get on the team. A medal was never in my thought process of the weekend, it was, be good enough on the team, don't embarrass yourself, just try and keep it simple. I've tried, it's my third time trying to go to Commonwealths, I've tried foil twice, um, just missed out twice, um, but I've always been like a two-weapon fencer, I feel like I've always been just like, I enjoy fencing more than anything else. Uh, I just, I don't think I've always been that good, but I just enjoy being there. So I thought I'm going to stop. I like doing two of them. This year, after COVID, not doing fencing for a while, I entered both full and Epe at Nationals because I wanted to do more fencing. It wasn't really, oh, I'm going to Epe, I'll do Epe this year. It was, well, I'll get another day of fencing in. And then I just, it all clicked suddenly. Like, it makes sense now, Epe. I'm, so, I, you know, I've already had an amazing season and then to finish it off this season with a medal at a Commonwealth Games that I, I never really thought I would get to go, really. And my plan this year, honestly, was to start going to coaching. I wanted to take some coaching courses. I was looking at when they would be in the year. And then it was like, oh, oh I'm doing pretty well. Okay, I'll, I'll maybe try competing for a bit longer. And now I've got, the, and now I've got a Commonwealth medal. Like, it's, it's amazing. No, when you're fencing by yourself... The only person that really matters in it is, you know, you, you want to do well for yourself. And, like, for, to a certain extent, like, I don't really mind too much if I don't do well or whatever. It's like, well, I've had fun at least or whatever. It's a, it's a good day. I fenced lucky over lost, whatever. But for the team, that, that the pressure of, like, everyone behind you wanting it as well, for some reason, just really spurs me on. And I, I've just always, at university, I, I absolutely loved it. It's what really got me to keep coming back to fencing was the team environment of just all pitching together. Women's foil defending champion Chloe Dixon won a tight match against teammate Mary McLaughlin in the quarterfinals. But lost out to eventual champion Kate Beardmore in the semi-final to take another bronze. I did want a medal, colour didn't really matter, um, so yeah, I'm pleased, I'm very pleased, especially for the third time. We're such a tight team and I enjoy it. It's not just about the, you know, the competition, it's the individuals within teammates, the you know, the organisers, everyone within the volunteers. It's it's different. It's just a totally different experience, an enjoyable experience and it's um, a competition that I wouldn't miss. I uh, had an injury um almost it was gonna almost be four years ago, um, before COVID. Um I was due to um, got a scan and uh, they'd say that I had a disc cold and disc on my nerve. Told her I had to rest and hopefully it would um, you know, help heal itself. Fortunately, come back to Vincent, it's not. Um, 
So I really need to take a step back, unfortunately, from fencing. Um, not that I'm saying it permanently, but it needs to be resolved. Of course, I wouldn't let those girls down. So yeah, hopefully aim for gold. And I know, I know we've got a strong team. I know we can do it any work of the day. And I believe in the girls. So yeah, I'm up for it. And in the women's sabre competition, teammates Elsie Llewellyn and Lucy Hyam clashed at the last 16 stage, with Lucy emerging victorious. Kate Deacon joined her in the quarter-finals, but only Lucy progressed nice as she ran into Olympian and eventual champion Bhavani Devi of India. And again, she starts slow with one step, waits, extends it, 15-5. But picking up a very popular bronze medal. And of course, it was a tasteful and engaging opening ceremony. featuring some familiar faces. A good first day with Scotland getting medals on the board early. More senior individual action. Women's Epi getting the second day of competition underway. Teammates Georgina Usher and Rachel Lever met in the last 16, with Rachel gaining the edge. And then advancing to the semi finals with a nerve shredding win. I had my last eight Victoria Hyde of England. Um, another close one, very up and down. Um, and then I was 14, 13 up, she flashed me off the line, 14 all, I think eight, eight seconds left. And I've never really liked priority, to be honest. My, my win streak and priority is not very good. So I just thought I had to go out here because I'm probably not going to win the priority point or I just hit. So I just thought I'm just going to go for it. And it, it actually has worked for me quite a lot. I've, I've won more matches doing that than on priority. So I just thought, hell, it, let's just let's just go for it. And that was that was quite quite a nail biter. But um, and then my semi final, I, I knew it was going to be tough. I had her in my pool. Um, the first part of the match was a lot closer than the second. I think I was just trying to go for it a bit too much, and she just picked me off. But I'm still very very pleased with how I performed at, at the end of the day. And the teams today, um, very, very excited. I, I'm so excited to fence with Georgina and Kat. I mean, I've been on the True Athlete Project with Kat um, in the past couple of years. And so it's just so great to be able to finally fence with her and especially Georgina as well. You know, so I think um, it's, it's going to be really fun. I mean, no matter, no matter what happens, as long as we just keep our heads down, never underestimate anybody and just hit them. <laughs> and then they've got the juniors later on in the week which I'm really excited for, you know, I've got, I don't feel like I've got pressure now to try and get the individual medal because I've, I've done that and I can just try and fence as best I possibly can and then, you know, without the pressure, I'd probably stand even a better chance of getting, you know, a couple higher. In the men's foil, Rochlin Jarvie and Keith Cook went to the wire in the last 16, with Keith making the win. while Callum Penman strode more comfortably into the quarter-finals. Callum bowed out there, but Keith proved he still had a few tricks up his sleeve to advance to the medal rounds. The semi-final was a step too far, but another Commonwealth medal added to the collection. Fantastic pick. Uh, so I had my day set out already before the competition. I knew when I was going to arrive. Uh, I knew my warm routine already because I'd rehearsed that over uh, years. Uh, arriving an hour and a half beforehand. 
and uh, did my uh, warm-up routine, had a few warm-up matches with my son, uh, Jamie, and uh, then took that time, just catching my breath and waiting for that pulls. And the pulls went well. I went all up, dropped 10 hits. I was number one seed uh, going into the direct eliminations. And I think the main thing uh, with the whole day was I had uh, processes in place. I was stayed calm. I had my little weird routines that I was doing. Um, I just felt fit. And seeing people dropping like flies in the uh, in the heat uh, just filled me more with confidence, being truthful. Uh, going into the DEs, I was calm. Um, and I wish I was like that when I was younger, like that, but a bit more fitter. There was moments of... Because uh, before, like, I've been retired for a long time. Like I do the odd competition, but I've not done international tournaments for a very, very long time properly. And it's, it was good for me to see moments of my old self, a little bit of snippets of what I used to be like, and showing the youngsters um, with this uh, old coach like that, and the, um, what, and some of the hits I used to do. If everyone remembers the old flick hit the shoulder. And I think every, uh, nearly everybody that uh, offence yesterday's got a nice hit on their shoulder. So, uh, or a nice mark to remember me by. Uh, Commonwealth medal number eight uh, so far. Uh, we've got lots of um, potential. It's such a young team for the future as well. Uh, I'm the old kid on the block, um, like uh, trying to direct and uh, try to manage uh, the team. But these guys are ruthless, um, especially um, at such a, a young age coming into this event. And uh, my job, I felt here, was to guide them. And the men's sprawls rounded off the senior individual events in typically loud and exuberant fashion. Rory McClellan was the star of the day, ruthless in his pool and powering through the direct elimination to pick up yet another bronze for the Scottish cause. Good day in the individual, um, bronze overall. Uh, it was a really hot day, uh, suddenly warming up and everything. I was ice packs and towels and things um, into the pools. I drew a quite a tough pool actually, um, but managed to get through winning all, all fights, which was good, which put me in a good seed. Uh, and then the semi final could have gone better, but uh, yeah, pleased overall. Good day. Yeah, we've um, built up quite a good team morale. We've been training together over the summer and doing team events together, so good, good morale. We're all excited and fortunate. Good day. And while Scotland's sole paraffenser, Stuart Gurney, found the going pretty tough in his first championships, it was great to see the world-class talent of the British team being showcased at the Commonwealth Championships for the first time. Another good day. Bronze medals in all the senior individual events. The first day of team events and a word from Scottish Fencing's Chief Operating Officer, Claire Queen. It's an event so far, but this is the first Commonwealth, so it's been really nice to sort of get the, the general buzz and the atmosphere in the place. I think the you know the added part of you know fencers representing their country adds a adds a really nice nice thing to the mix and um, I think there's a really good atmosphere in the in the Scotland camp so um, I'm also really looking forward to the team fencing in the next couple of days because that's the first time I've seen that and you know really looking forward to seeing to seeing how that pans out but um, it's been really good so far. We've, we've, we've had some conversations so far obviously in the lead up to this we we did a little bit of training with the fencers to, to sort of prepare for this but um, probably in an ideal world we would have started that training a little bit further out than we did um, and I think the what, what we did was was quite well received and there was some good feedback and, and sort of an appetite to do a little bit more of that and you know so we're certainly going to be looking at the plans for for how we can sort of incorporate that not just in the in the run up to commonwealths but looking at you know the overall plan and how we build towards you know um, fencers developing themselves as individuals also the team events as well whether it be home nations or commonwealths and i think there's i think there's some work we can do to you know to to sort of generate that competition within Scotland and, and get the fencers training together and see if we can push them on. So um, I'm quite hopeful that we'll be able to, you know, to expand on what we've done over the next few years. The men's EPI team backed up their solid individual results to progress smoothly through the early rounds. Where we 
to reach the final where they would face India. And what a battle it was. And again, pushing for those attacks. Either side able to take a convincing lead. Oh no! Sing despair faces his box. Sing looking for his moment. But India clinching the win on the final hit. A great day. First silver medal for the men's FA for Scotland for I don't know how long. I'm not a historian of the sport. I oh, know it's been many, many years. And in the, the team chats we had before, all we did was looked at the matchups and how people felt that they could fence and each and every one of them trusted each other. And I think that's what got us our performance. And because the Indians were a strong team, great final and missed it by one here. We've got a great backup staff this time that really helps for the coaches that we can just get on with coaching. And I feel that the the unity within the team after the, the teams, should I say, after uh, Scotland did our training, is it, showing through. You can see that the pods of team really close. And I think that really helps. As you well know, the amount of team spirit takes us a long way. The women's foilists were similarly ruthless, disposing of the Wales and Australia on their way to a final matchup with England. It was a close match early on, but the intense heat was definitely affecting some of the fencers. And in the end, they had to settle for silver. The thing that I really enjoyed most about the women's foil team was how supportive they were of each other. And it was good to see that they actually recognised the need to help and support each other. And they were really up for the fight. Uh, the challenges that were a bit surprising was how hot it was going to be and the temperature. It was just frightening. But they all seemed to cope quite well in the initial stages. The preparation, this was probably one of the... In the last recent years, because of COVID and everything, that we've actually had team preparation. And so it was really good to see the girls making an effort to actually uh, train together and plan ahead. And for me, watching that, it's quite pleasurable because that was a bit of a first. Normally, we'd just be hodgepodge individuals meeting for a team and then showing up and do the best. But this group collectively put in a lot of effort to actually meet up and train together. It's stressful because you have, you don't want to make their tasks any more difficult than they are by, you know, talking to them or trying to tell them what to do. They're all quite experienced. So you have to allow them to be themselves and just gently offer support and advice as you think is absolutely essential. So I find that quite challenging. But I enjoy them watching them face the challenge and meet the challenge. That's probably what I enjoy most. And for the women's sabre team, a small number of entries meant an agonising last hit loss to Australia in the semi-final, was followed by a third place playoff defeat against India. And no medal this time. Some team silver to add to the collection of individual bronzes. The last day of seniors and more teams. For the women's Epius, a strong win against Australia in the quarterfinals, at a semi-final clash with Canada.
in a match that rather got away from the Scots in the first half, the Canadians proved to be too strong. Bronze medals. The men's Sabre team, well prepared and well coached, blew away New Zealand in the quarter final and Australia in the semi final. And so on to a final against England. Skips away does McClellan. He's building now. Howes looking to defend on the strong start. Line. Attack for McClellan. 10 8 the score. Oh! Brilliant paradox. Some tough scrapping. Let's take it over. Is it the attack? Yes, it is. Stuart Scott on the board for Scotland. Well, a bit. And excellent support. In the end, wasn't enough to stop a very strong English team. Silvers for the boys. and men's foil teams. Keith Cook led his band of babyface foilists to comfortable wins against Northern Ireland and Canada to ensure another Scotland-England final. Sadly, Scotland never really got going in the match. Although there were some big hits in there. Heads twice missing with the repost. And is it the finish from Penman? It absolutely is. Misses Jamie Kirk. And England oh, took a convincing strong. victory. Thank you very much. Ben Peggs got the send off from his team he deserved. We are now taking a short break and we will be back. And Keith left the stage for the last time with a ninth senior Commonwealth medal. With Jamie by his side. Seniors done and a ton of medals. The first day of competition for our junior fencers and a tough day at that. Many of the junior teams were largely made up of cadet fencers. Many were inexperienced at this level. We could look at the effects of the COVID pandemic on membership numbers, the need to professionalise the clubs dropout rate between school and university fencing, the lack of depth in some weapons, and some star fencers having a disappointing day. But the bottom line, 
was no medals on day five. Elsie Llewellyn in the Junior Women's Sabre came closest, reaching the quarter-finals. But today was not our day. More juniors renewed hope. Rory McClellan couldn't quite repeat his heroics from the senior events at junior level and bowed out the quarter-final stage of the junior men's sabre. On red, Bullman has accelerated away in the second half. And Rachel Lever in junior Guts women's epi did manage to add a third bronze to the two senior medals she picked up earlier in the competition. In the junior men's foil, Lachlan Jarvie suffered another agonising last-hit loss in the quarter-finals, while clubmates Nye Ufert Kilpatrick and Callum Penman met at the same stage, with Callum taking the win this time to advance to the semi-finals. Jamie Cook joined him there, with the two lads produced outstanding performances. Cook pauses, faints, Williams freezes in response. He is through to the final. Penman then pressing, pressing, draws the response and he is back into the lead. Oh. Our last final of the junior to give us our first all Scottish final of these championships. It is an all Scottish affair. Those 50 50 decisions, if you can make most of yours, uh, that can really change the dynamic of the fight. And that's exactly what um, Cook is doing. Oh, there's the finish under yeah. the arm. The final itself maybe wasn't the classic we might have hoped for. Over the top, misses Jamie Cook. Junior individual men's foil champion triumphing over his teammate and clubmate Callum Penman. 8 15 the final score. There we are, this final. But that's easy to forgive when they're standing on the top two steps of the podium. and we get the first outing for Flower of Scotland. The first interview with these two. A lot of good fencing today. I feel like I fenced well. Um, very happy when I was up. Um, and then this guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the final. Last eight fight against... Who do I have? All Gianli. We, yeah, knocked me out in the seniors. Revenge is sweet. Uh, <laughs> I battered him. Um, <laughs> then in the four, David Williams. This is why my nose looks so bad. I got a guard in the face. I'm not, I don't just look like that. Uh, yeah, no, made it to the final. And then, yeah, this man. Eh? Uh, I won one. Yeah, exactly. I won one. He needed it. That's good. <laughs> really? <laughs> it compensated for my nose, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought, well, I can't let him be a silver medalist and do clap, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did that to be done, innit? I mean, yeah. It was in a really good position for a team event as well. So that's uh, that'll be us, number one seed. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely. number one seed for team event. So, best possible run, hopefully to the final and gold. Oh, 15 now, yeah. I will not be training for a while. I will see Slacker. most likely shattered. That's why I didn't win. <laughs> A first gold and some podium domination. The junior teams and the first of the veterans. The 
junior men's FPS unfortunately just came up short against New Zealand in the quarter final. And the junior women's sabre team suffered the same fate as their senior counterparts, losing to Australia in the semi final. And then facing a bronze medal playoff against India. With sadly the same result. The junior women's foilists won a hard fought match against Malaysia in the quarter final. But found England too strong in the semi final and collected bronze medals. Yeah, I think it was good when we went in to Benz Team Malaysia and we were well prepared, I feel like, luckily, in the individuals. In between us, we had all fenced them, so we went in well prepared and we went over our tactics and how to go for it. And um, I think our lineup was pretty good and it worked for us. And it was kind of a, it wasn't a straightforward. We weren't winning the whole time. It was an up and down, up and down. But I think what helped us get through it was we really kept our cool and we kept calm and collected. Um, and obviously in England, when we went to England in the semis, it was a tough match and we knew it was going to be a tough match. Um, but we just knew we had to give it our all. And, <laughs> Sorry. And just, we gave them a really good goal, so yeah, could be more pleased with it, yeah. yeah. I think it has been really difficult and we've all struggled, but having the England fans and bringing our own fans, and like ice packs and stuff has really helped. Well, I, well, yeah, we've all really enjoyed it so far. Um, and as most of us are doing cadets, juniors has been a good, a good warm up, you know, to get used to like the heat and what it's like to fence in the heat. I'd always like he like he imitates Andy Murray by going, it was a tough match. <laughs> he said it was a tough match. <laughs> and we had the first of the veterans events. In veteran women's sabre, the Frith claimed the over 70 age group title. While Andrew Brown also took the V70 crown in the veteran men's epi. First junior team medal and veterans making their mark. The first day of competition for the cadets and more veterans. Cadet women's foil first up with Sophie Schofield and Zoe Wagstaff progressing to the quarter finals but no further this time because as the young men's EPS and women's survivors found it's tough out there, no matter who's looking out for you. In veteran women's foil, Beatrice Taylor claimed bronze for Scotland. And the over 40s title. And in the veteran men's sabre, Mo Mansouri kept his composure through some tough direct elimination fights, getting more confident as the competition progressed to make it to the final, where some lovely fencing took him to gold. And there's the attack, it's parried by Mansouri, he and lands with the riposte 10-6, he is the 2022 veteran men's sabre commonwealth champion. And Julian Gosch claimed the veteran 60 crown. Fantastic. It feels like I've um, I've got to achieve what I what I aim to do this season, which is what which is great. Um it's always been the focus to kind of come to the Commonwealth and, and try and win it and it's great to for it all to have worked out. So I'm really happy with that. Really pleased.
after I graduated, I moved to um, I moved to Aberdeen. So I was living there for several years, um, and I was welcomed into this into Scottish fencing and into into uh, Scotland North specifically. I, were, I was a captain for the region. Um, I really loved it. I, I felt very at home there, and I felt very looked after. Um, and I really I was I was. I was asked if I could, I would, I'd consider fencing in Scotland, and I said, "Yeah, I would." Um, so, it's, um, so I kind of, sw- I guess, I switched then, um, and uh, I, um, I've really, in- I've really enjoyed being part of the Scot- Scotland setup, and especially the preparation of this Commonwealth Games has been really, Commonwealth Championships has been really good. It's been really um, together. It's been nice to kind of be part of that. Going up to train with the guys up in Perth, um, we had we had one training session down in London as well. It was great. So that was good. Um, no, it's, it's been really lovely to be part of that whole team. It's, and I felt um, very welcome, especially because it was my first Commonwealth Championships. A good day for the veterans, tougher for the young'uns. Last day of juniors, more veterans. Junior women's EPS were edged out by Wales in the quarter final. No medal today. But a young men's sabre team saw off the Welsh in their quarter finals and put in a strong performance against England in the semi final. Good committed action. And he's stuck in the middle of the piece. Max Cromie, he will be happy to have gotten. England over the line there. A fine bronze for the young men's surprise. <laughs> and the junior men's foilists were ruthless in disposing of Wales and Malaysia en route to another team final against England. Neil Biter followed, but with Scotland almost always holding a narrow lead. Take the win. He's certain now. And claim the top spot on the podium. Which meant I had to interview some of these guys again. And obviously the final. Very, very close match. And we won! Definitely one of the coldest days, I think. It started raining at one point, which was the first time I've been happy to see rain. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, walking got a hit so great, the lights turned off. And that was uh, yeah, that was, was pretty mental. Sweet. And then, as <laughs> <laughs> <just> last <laughs> week does, yeah, it was a great comeback. Yeah, we're all friends of the team. But it's also, I've never been in a team where I've had such confidence to help the piece that no matter what I've done, they'll just slap them out for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Win or lose, next time I'm coming on, it's going to be better than how I left it. It was an honour. Absolutely, all lads. Yeah. Easy potential there. I'm, I'm really hoping for a medal, and obviously we can add Thomas and David to the team, so that's going to be great. Sorry, Lockie, you're gone. David's uh, not still on rubbish. It's not a bit Have you seen your trim? Nah, it's, make sure you zoom in on that, please. Oh, he's actually asked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the veterans' mess foilist couldn't repeat the podium domination of four years ago in Canberra, with Mike Mackay being the best of the bunch with a quarter final finish. And it is going to be the veteran but in the veteran women's epi, Georgina Usher strode confidently into the final as top seed after an impressive series of direct elimination wins. The final itself was a little slow to get going. Let's call it KG.
but in the end it was a tactical plan that secured the gold for Georgina. Winning in Scotland in 2014 was by far and away the, the, the best experience for me. But coming back here, you know, this this has been a long journey for fencing with COVID and everything. And my dad died during COVID and he was such a great supporter of my fencing. And at the time that he kind of died, I was suffering a lot with back pain and everything else. And I thought, you know what, I really, really need to do something just to sort of just for myself. And at that point, it's like, right, I'm going to get back into get myself fit and try and get back into fencing. So just being here is really cool. Uh, it's you know fantastic to have the opportunity to to bring a, a veteran's gold back home. Oh, that's a funny one, isn't it? So fencing just gets sort of into your into your system, and as I get older, you know, you, I try all sorts of other sports, and it just doesn't motivate me in the same way that fencing does. It it sort of is that kind of physical and mental. Um, challenge that it just running just doesn't I'm not great at running it's not a, not 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 something that's uh, great for other people to watch me run in fact it, it really is quite painful um but but there's just something so it's so all-encompassing and so absorbing and exciting and it really is I think I've, I've now reconciled myself to the fact I'm never going to be able to leave fencing so in one way or another I'm hanging around so there we go any day with two gold medals has to be a good day The first day of competition for the cadets and more veterans. Cadet women's foil first up. With Sophie Schofield. And Zoe Wagstaff progressing to the quarterfinals, but no further this time. Because, as the young men's EPS and women's suburbs found, it's tough out there, no matter who's looking out for you. In veteran women's foil, Beatrice Taylor claimed bronze for Scotland. And the over 40s title. And in the veteran men's sabre, Will Mansuri kept his composure through some tough direct elimination fights, getting more confident as the competition progressed to make it to the final, where some lovely fencing took him to gold. And there's the attack, it's parried by Mansuri, he and lands with the riposte 10-6. He is the 2022 veteran men's sabre Commonwealth champion. And Julian Gosch claimed the veteran 60 crown. Fantastic. It feels like I've um, I've got to achieve what I what I aim to do this season, which is what which is great. Um it's always been the focus to kind of come to the Commonwealth and, and try and win it and it's great to for it all to have worked out. So I'm really happy with that. Really pleased. After I graduated, I moved to um, I moved to Aberdeen. So I was living there for several years, um, and I was welcomed into this into Scottish fencing and into into uh, Scotland North specifically. I, were, I was a captain for the region. Um, I really loved it. I, I felt very at home there, and I felt very looked after. Um, and I really I was I was. I was asked if I could, I would, I'd consider fencing in Scotland, and I said, "Yeah, I would." Um, so it's, um, so I kind of I guess I switched then, um, and uh, I. Um, I've really 
I've really enjoyed being part of the Scotland setup, and especially the preparation of this Commonwealth Games has been really, Commonwealth Championships has been really good. It's been really um, together. It's been nice to kind of be part of that. Going up to train with the guys up in Perth. Um, we had we had one training session down in London as well. It was great. So that was good. Um, no, it's, it's been really lovely to be part of that whole team, it's, and I felt um, very welcome, especially because it was my first Commonwealth Championships. A good day for the veterans, tougher for the young'uns. The second day of cadet individuals and the first of veteran teams. An up and down kind of a day. The cadet men's sobriers and women's epius were almost all either very young or very inexperienced or both and the Commonwealth Championships are a tough place to try and learn the ropes. In contrast, the veteran men's epi team were neither young nor inexperienced, but still couldn't find a way past their Welsh opponents in the quarter-final. But the veteran women's sobriers bucked the trend to recover from a narrow semi-final loss to Canada to beat Wales in the playoff match and take bronze. So then it was time for the cadet men's foilists to go. Callum Penman's face says it all after a quarter-final loss. But Jamie Cook won his quarter-final match. Teammates and clubmates Nye, Ulfurtz Kilpatrick and Thomas Walton met at the quarter-final stage also. And after a proper battle, Thomas progressed to the semi-final. We would meet his teammate, clubmate and cousin, Jamie. Another scrap followed. Thomas into the final. We are back for our last final of the day, and it is the Cadets Men's Foil Final between Thomas Walton of Scotland and David Sosnov of England. Ready, both sexes up for this. Um, but and it all seems to be going so David well. Sosnov relies on um, generally, he's got a different target area, he's left handed. He can, um, for want of a better word, squirm out of hits, but that's not effective when somebody's charging down the piece at you. Until an accidental guard to the face. Looks like that a medical timeout. Thomas as well, with the both attacking off the line time though how he can introduce his game onto this match and it seems uh, Walton is very much dictating the pace as it stands in the break and Walton just looking a bit sluggish on his feet Sosnov through he is slower he is slower off the line Together and Walton just takes off his mask and and ultimately a retirement. And he's actually has he unplugged himself. Yeah, he has that injury that he took with the blow to the mask just too much. England's David Sosnov, crowned Commonwealth featherweight champion.
another double middle D for the men's foilists. And a double proud dad, coach, family moment. Three more middles, plus minor cuts and contusions. First day of cadet teams, plus even more veterans. The cadet women's sabre team narrowly missed out in the middle with a playoff loss to India. But the cadet men's Epius upset the form book to beat Singapore in the quarter final. Canada were too strong in the semi, but it was a well deserved bronze for the boys. Pulled back and kind of surprised everyone by overturning Singapore, despite being seed six and then being seed three. It was really hot. It was sweltery, I might say. It really sweaty. We had to take our kit off every single time we got off the piste because it was unbearable to keep it on for any longer. I think it went really well as a team. We made ourselves proud and fought really hard till the end. The cadet women's foilists battled past Canada in the semi final. Set up another clash with the old enemy. We've got, uh, Again, the Scots came up just short against the English women's foilist, despite it's fighting hard throughout. Silver for the girls. Defending champions, the veteran men's foil team swept aside Australia in the semi-final and advanced to the final, where England were once again waiting. Some of the referees appear to have taken leave of their senses due to the excitement of the Pokemon World Championships, which were taking place at the nearby London Excel. An early lead was soon dissipated, and the match became the tense scrap that many had expected. Kai gets one back, and there's that delayed attack. And this time, Payne looks to go up over the top. Prime attack before. England toughed it out, and it was silver this time for the Scots. This time, Abidogan takes the blade, scores with the repost, and takes England to the title. He started it off, Dakota Abidogan. And the veteran women's Epiusts won tight matches in their quarter-final against Wales and semi-final against England to give us another nail-biter against Australia in the final. They led the match. Something that she can feed off of, something that she can do something with. And this time, she gets the attack, but Tate times it well. Both of them clearly very happy to go into the priority minute. Very well. With the scores the level at time, the title came down to one extra minute for a single hit. Brought it back from a two-hit deficit. Here we go. Why wait? The final minute. And Usher over the top to score. As Nutt is looking to set up the press, Georgina Usher dives in immediately. Six seconds gone on the clock. Gold for the Golden Girls in a four medal haul. The last day, going out with a bang or a whimper. The 
the cadet women's EPS were up against it and couldn't find a way past India in the quarter-final. The cadet men's sabre team faced Wales in their quarter-final. Osh Lindsay Dorwood provided some great dance moves and a stirring comeback and Josh Bryden brought things level in the final leg. The Welsh ultimately took the win. The veteran men's surprise had their moments against England in the quarter-final. But in the end, were well beaten. veteran women's foilists had an absolutely fantastic match against Wales in the quarter-final that ultimately ended with an agonising loss. So the responsibility for collecting final day medals fell to the cadet men's foilists with their burst noses and split lips. Northern Ireland in the quarter-final. And Canada in the semi-final were dealt with with minimum fuss. give us another Scotland-England final, just like all the um, other men's foil team finals at these championships. ...to anyone who's been watching the live stream uh, over the course of the championships. And it probably helps your cause when the opposition dropped their strongest fencer on his head during the pre-match routine. ...leading out the Scottish team. And... Despite this, Scotland got off to a slow start, but were soon on the charge and taking control of the match. And there is Thomas Walton through with the counter -apost. And there it is, looking for Gen for that counter-attack. This time, Penman equal to it, finds the parry in the middle legs. He's coming off the line looking for the attack on prep, but it's nowhere near aggressive enough. Uh, obvious at the finish that you have to be so deliberate in blocking it out. Line scored by Penman. Now, just he has too little a margin of error to make. And Jamie Cook with the remise skipping away. Jamie Cook under the arm. chose his moment, didn't let Soznov set it up himself and that's the 45th that it is the second team gold medal for this Scottish men's foil team. They took the junior title earlier this week and they have now taken the cadet title. So one last outing to the podium for Sky the Unicorn and the boys get their well-earned gold medals. Because gold medal winning teams don't just happen overnight. Only one medal on the final day, but leaving on a high. And as the last of the action is recorded for posterity, the equipment is packed away. And there's some killing time before the journey home. There are closing speeches from the great and the good. And a final word from Alex. Yeah, but I'm going to bed for four years now. Before we get to the philosophical and reflective conclusion, first let's have some big hits and highlights, because there were plenty of those.
we've looked back at the successes, the learning experiences, the near misses, the triumphs, and the changing of the guard. But even for those that were there, they won't remember exactly who won medals. They might remember the sheer size of the event, the heat, those that helped, the hanging out, the coaches. The noise from the stand, moments with their teammates, with their family. Rehydrating. Because the special thing about being part of the Scottish team at the Commonwealth isn't the tracksuit or the unicorn or the flags the walk to the podium, or even the medals. No, the special thing about the Scottish team is the people.